one of Finland's thousand lakes, and in the little country town of Eveskala, preparations for the rally of that name are well in hand, although to the casual observer, things still look pretty normal. But in this hotel car park, an unofficial centre for kids and cars, there's a fair amount of organised chaos. Fords, led by rally manager Bill Barnett, are here early. They've three twin cams, for Bink, Soderstrom and Gunnar Palm, Ovi Anderson and Arnie Nordland, and a young economics student from Helsinki, Hanu Mikola, and co-driver Ansi Yabi. Saab are here in strength with Lampinen, Arrhenius and Bromark. And of course no Thousand Lakes would be complete without the master, Timo Mäkinen and his Cooper S, winner for the last three years. There are the last minute flaps. Seats, for one thing. Yeah, well, we can adjust it. We've got feet. So the thing is, it wants another frame. Seat OK? Yes. Iron is too heavy. Pardon? Iron is too heavy. No. We have to change. You're absolutely sure? Because, you know, we can't do anything on the rally. There won't be time. The thing is, what lights do you want? Yeah, I was thinking about these CBA flat cogs that oh, Ovi's got on his car. Spit and polish, and a few minor adjustments for BMC. <laughs> Tires on a job like this are all important. Adhesion on these roads is hard to come by. And BMC even go to the trouble of hand cutting an extra tread pattern to get just a little bit more. And so to scrutineering, held a mile or two out of town. There's Vero's Honda in the front of the queue. Advertisements are not only allowed, they're compulsorily stuck there by the organizers to pay for the rally. Lights, as always, keep the scrutineers busy. Obviously in the newspaper business. Porsche have only one official entry. We ask Huschke von Hanstein why. Well, we, we really came to please Toy Wonen because I think he can't be beaten in the championship anymore, but as it is his, his native event and uh, he's a local hero on uh, the side of Timo Mackinen, I think we should have given him a car. That's why we came over with one car while the other Porsches entered our private ones. There are two Abingdon cars for Timo and Fitterbring. BMC's competitions chief, Peter Browning, tells us about the rally. It's very, very fast special stages, this. The, the, the ground is very much different from that which we cover normally. It's, it's, most of it's very, very smooth, and all the little uh, stones are very small pebbles, and it's just like driving on ball bearings. And even the likes of you or I, the normal driver, could put a car sideways at 20 miles an hour. So this is really why the fins are so good. Peter, what are Timo's chances of making it four times running? Well, um, he said yesterday when he tried his car that it was the fastest and the best handling minute that we've ever provided for him. He's been practicing like crazy for the last 10 days, really hard. He knows all the stages by heart without pace notes. He can drive over them. He knows his way. He knows every hump. He knows every bend. Um, I think we're very confident. It's a rally where driving skill and the strength of the motor car more than power probably pay off. And Timo is unquestionable the expert out here. Why does a Finn always win the Thousand Lakes? Here's Ford's Bill Barnett. Oh, I think it's, it's knowledge of their own roads. Um, they've been driving on, they learned to drive out here at a very early age. And um, I don't think anybody outside of Scandinavia has a ghost of a chance of winning this event. Now Hanu Mikola gives us a demonstration of just why this is true, to an accompaniment of bouncing stones. <laughs> And he tells us how he does it. The second gear, the third, and now I'm bending left and corner. Not so bad. Going 100 kilometers an hour. Next left, going full. And then I'm waiting jump. Here is coming. The fourth gear, now it's long, long. Right hand corner. 
take a little leaf here, so. And now, very fat, very fat left. Very fat left. And then, chasing again, third gear. And the left hand, pull. That's what it's like to drive with Mikola. Now a front wheel expert, Timo Mackinnon. And now it's medium left again. Well, I would try to rest underway first, first gear, and changing second gear, changing third gear. And now it's coming long right hand corner. Put it car a little bit sideways. Keep it out. And put it second gear. Out any clutch. I'm using left foot braking. Putting first gear, medium left. Sideways. And full power, second gear. Jump. Up. And third gear. Brow. Jump. Uh. Jump. Uh. Very fast left, and plenty sideways, and other way, good, and sideways again, all time using left foot braking, and keep the car balance with brakes. Third gear, short corner. If you have short corner, don't put the car never sideways. You lost your time. Sideways again. Jump. Watch this turn. Handbrake and all. Now he's on his way back. Front and rear drive. Different techniques, clearly shown by the footwork. Hanu Mikola, almost like a weekend driver. Clutch foot relaxed except for changes. Timo tap dancing with brake and throttle. And so the 1968 Rally of the Thousand Lakes begins with special stage number one. Down the dual carriageway, round, and up the other side. corner off tarmac onto dirt worries most of the competitors. Some are slow but competent. Some tentative. And others frankly ridiculous. <laughs> There's Rano Altenham's sister Mayata. And Timo Mackinnon's brother Tapio. That's Atso Aho in the third team mini. Hanno Mikola. Leo Kinunen, Porsche. Götterbring in the works mini. Let's see them round that bend. Aho. Mikola. Götterbring, full lock. Simo Lampinen, neat as usual. 
Vink Soderstrom. He hits a curb on this test. Toivonen, front wheels locked, drops a clanger. And Timo. But for style, nobody really matches Kosloff in the Moskvich. I'd almost think that Russo-Finnish relations aren't too good. He's been wanting to do that for years. Not a very good start for Koslov, and it'll take more than a hammer and sickle to get the dents out. Night is closing in fast as the later numbers leave Ivascula and make their way, at 30 miles an hour, the Finns are dead keen on speed limits, to the first of the 34 stages, six of the original 40 having been cancelled. The police look benignly on. The public road is closed and there's not a radar trap in sight. Oni Vilkas there is a veteran of Finnish rallying. Aho. Mikola. Noonan. He'd been fastest on stage one. But down the road, Bengt Soderstrom is having his front torsion bars put straight after the curb incident in Ivescula. The precious minutes are passing. Bengt is furious with himself. Timo, himself in alternator bother, goes by. He's to be third fastest on the stage. Only Porsches will beat him. Toivonen is quickest, Kinunen second. Now Bengt is nearly in the hunt again. He's about 20 minutes down, but he catches it up by the first time control, 110 kilometers on. Fantastic. Stage three now, and the first of the famous Finnish yumps. A Timoism that's become a part of rally language everywhere. But now it's night, and the rains have come. Turning the loose dust into a skating rink quagmire of greasy ball bearings. At higher, time control four, it's a miserable job for the marshals and the cameramen. And you call it sport. With the rain, mechanical bothers increase. Alternators are the main offenders. It's early days yet, but Hanu Mikola is lying first overall with 3,396.6 penalties. Lampinen is second. Lucenius, Renault Gordini third. Toivonen is out with a broken drive shaft. Total stage times in seconds are added as penalties. There's no bogey to beat. Soderstrom checks in. Passing the control twice isn't against the rules, so he turns to fill up. Timo, his alternator fixed, is 14 minutes and 720 penalties down on the road. He's in 38th place, but his stage times are still well up. And so it's day again. Still raining, and by now they're in mud up to their uh, armatures. Simo Lampinen is second overall. Risto Einto, Volkswagen. At Haminlina, the weather's no better as they check in at time control six at 5.30 in the morning for a 40 minute pause and speed test round the scale electric type circuit. This should have been a spectator fiesta, but at this time in the morning, in this weather, 
with no more than a misty rain-swept track to peer at. Only a sauna-conditioned fin could possibly enjoy it. Nicola is solidly in the lead, 39 penalties clear of Lampinen. Over Anderson is seventh, Soderstrom eighth, so it's Fords for the team prize at the moment. Kinunen, 39, is fastest in this five-lap figure-eight sprint. Mikola is second, so when they get close, it's a good old dice. The cars start five at a time at three-second intervals. Laminen, Escort GT. Bengt Soderstrom, Twin Cam. Whoops, and down the escape road for one of the GTs. Line Porsche is third quickest. Sort of strong four. Poor Timo's unhappy rally is about to end. He strips first gear at the start, and there's no hope. Imagine Timo letting a Volvo get away with it like this. Once, perhaps, but not twice. Not everybody does get away with it without a panel-beating job to pay for. That's the Isuzu Bele of Osmo Makala. Bad luck, lad. And now it's back to the mud and slime on stage 22. It looks like dust, but it certainly isn't. Stone, sand and water is the recipe. Watch your legs, auntie. Here comes Mikola. You have to be tough to enjoy Finnish rallies as a spectator. There's a funny little stage in Lati. It's up a concrete road, round the council sand pit, and back down a steep, loose slope to the road again. Two laps each. One or two competitors have bothers. Mrs. Kirsty Ari Keller in her Isuzu for one. And for him, Mikola has a positive brainstorm. There's Aho in the remaining Team Mini. Not content with making a fist of it first time, Hanu nearly does it again. But Ford fortunes are retrieved with a neat run by Bengt Soderstrom, second fastest to Kinunen's Porsche. And so the dreary, muddy way leads on, past the many Finnish lakes which the unkind suggest just fell one day from the ruddy sky. We near the stage 25 by now, considered by most of the drivers to be the hardest one of the lot. All yumps and bumps and battering. A yump's all right if you yump straight. But yumping crooked is harder. Sometimes too hard to take at all, like Karpinen and his revolving Volvo. What? <laughs> Happily, neither driver is damaged, but for a second or two, fire looks like finishing off what was once a very nice motor car. <laughs> But all's well, and it's clear the stage for the next car down. And that's Soderstrom. Watch him yump. Hello. 
Anu Mikola is well in the lead at the start of stage 27. It would have been a lovely picture in the right weather. Anderson is sixth. Soderstrom third. The Fords are one, two, three on this stage with Bengt fastest. Simo Lampinen, after a night of slipping clutch bother, held at bay incidentally with washing powder and Coca-Cola, is driving brilliantly, but he's lost second place to an unknown Finnish driver, Penti Arikella, in a Nizuzu Belay. There's line. Kinunen is out. Now the way leads back to Iveskala. A rest period and another stage in the rain. And oh gosh, that rain. It's turned the route into a quagmire, made driving a nightmare, soaks the spectators and spots the camera lenses so quickly that wiping does no good at all. In the Parc Ferme, Taru Katonen, Renault Gordini, and boy is she fed up. Simo, his clutch having left no Coca-Cola for his child, gives a driving lesson, in spite of worries about a broken suspension which can't be welded until he's on the road again. Sleep comes naturally to Kirsti Arikella and Eva Hinonen. But it isn't long before the remaining 51 are off again, with another half night in prospect. Stage 31. Already it's dusk and conditions get worse all the time. Anno Mikola still leads the field in fine style with boot leader flapping. Anderson is fifth overall, but is soon to go out with a broken diff, putting paid to Ford's team prize hopes. Solostrom, fourth, is pulling out all the stops to catch Lampinen. Aho scents a good placing. Simo, his suspension fixed, is still third. Before the stage is over, it's dark again. Penti Arikella is still holding off the mighty twin cams and buzzing sobs. Here he comes. The sparks fly. The campfires burn and the cars hammer away into the night through to stage 40, the virtual end of the rally. The ladies look as fresh as paint. But bad news comes that Penty's great drive has ended in a roll only two stages from the end. Without personal damage, Mrs. Ari Keller is happy to know. Aho has been going like the clappers, trying without avail to catch Soderstrom. But all eyes are on Hanu Mikola, two and a half minutes ahead, and only a main road section left to the official finish in Iveskila and his first international rally win. The young economic student and his co-driver, Ansi Yavi, have carved a well-deserved place for themselves in Finland's rally story. Meanwhile, in Iveskala, the crowds at the finish wait to cheer them in at the end of a drive which has established Hanu Mikola as a truly worthy member of the distinguished company of Flying Finns. What a moment for him. And for Ansi Yavi, who has only to hand in that road book to win. For Simo Lampinen, a well-deserved and well-driven second. And for Saab, the manufacturer's team prize. For Bink Soderstrom and Gunnar Palm, a spectacular third after their trials and tribulations. They've driven without an alternator for a day and a night, thanks to a constant supply of batteries. And for Aho, fourth place. A mini had to be up there somewhere. <laughs> but what sort of time did you two have? Very uh, funny time, I think. <laughs> what do you mean by funny? Yes, uh, we have... Um, we like <laughs> this kind of sport. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly seem to do pretty well at it. That time. Hanno is excellent driver. <laughs> and that seems to be quite an understatement. Thank you. Thank you.